Thank you so much for being here today. Can you please tell us your name, what you do, and a little bit about your background? Yeah, so my name is Heather Catania, and I live in Los Angeles. I am the founder of Social Fleur, which is a digital content agency in LA, really working with purpose-driven women in media and entertainment. I started my agency about five years ago when I was let go of my full-time job working at a well-known magazine. And I kind of didn't know what was next. I started to freelance. I was, you know, just kind of taking on random jobs and um, figuring out what to do. And I actually started my agency when a friend of mine, very close friend who was on a popular TV show had asked me about social media. I had been kind of um, on him to, to start his digital marketing and, um, he became my first client and my agency was born from there. So it was born in a time of, um, it was born in a time of, uh, myself. Like I had never been an entrepreneur. I had only, you know, worked full time at a corporate magazine and, you know, in full-time jobs. And so that was really my, the start of my journey in entrepreneurship. And it was a really rocky road. Um, it was a really rocky road. And I had invested in some business coaching at the time. I was really looking for a mentor. I had worked with a couple of really sort of well-known people in the industry. And um, I started to gain success as an agency. I was working with celebrity clients. I was working with some of the biggest names in the industry and even the world. And I was incredibly unhappy. I was so burnt out. Even with a team, I had built a small team and, um, and still I was, you know, just feeling so burnt out, so uninspired. Um, I had achieved really all of my goals in, in two iterations of my life. My first, um, career path as a magazine editor. I, I was one of the youngest magazine editors at Connie Nast by the age of 23 at the time. Um, this was prior to digital, prior to social media and, um, I had achieved all of those goals. And then, you know, I realized this isn't really what I want my life to look like. And then when I started my agency and I became an entrepreneur, I felt like, okay, I'm going to start this business because I can have control and I'll have freedom and I can work for myself and blah, blah, blah. And I just kept chasing the success milestones. I was like, if I get this big client, if they pay me this much, you know, per month or a year, uh, all of those things that I thought would bring me success. And in my first year of business, I made $200,000. I kind of doubled every year. And as I doubled my income and as I doubled my team, it still just didn't feel good. And I had invested in other mentors, very well-known industry mentors that lots of people work with. And um, they kept telling me, you have a successful business. What are you doing? You'd be crazy to walk away from this. And I felt like even in those containers, even when I was supported by the amazing women inside, I felt like I had built this gilded cage mm. um, instead of building this life of freedom that I had wanted. And inside of this gilded cage, when I was going outside for mentorship and guidance, they told me to stay. And then it felt even more like a gilded cage. And that was where I had a serious existential crisis because um, I had built this business. And every time I wanted to kind of like pivot or evolve or walk away in some capacity, it almost got more successful. Like I, I would get a bigger name client or a dream project, you know, in some capacity. And it kept me sort of locked in. And I came to Makosi last year. It's been almost a year now, I think, since we've been working together. Uh, we started working together in December of 2021. And I came to her with this conundrum because I, you know, had had tried to evolve this business in so many different ways. And again, with other mentors. And I just could not see the light of, of how I could make this business work for my clients, the need of the industry, and also me and my life. Um, 
working in digital and social media for some of the most famous people in the world is really tough. And, you know, uh, even as I build my team, my, I saw my team members getting burnt out. I just felt like I was transferring the burnout and being an empathic entrepreneur. I was very sensitive to that. And I, I just felt like, Oh, this is, you know, felt like a bandaid on a wound. And so I came to Makosi really almost feeling somewhat depleted. And even I sort of lacked hope at that point. Cause I was like, Oh, you know, going to be another mentor and coach kind of telling me to like stick with it and stick it out, you know, just hire more team and things like that. And it wasn't working with Makosi was the first time, you know, in the, you know, as we, um, really got into it where I could see, okay, there is a higher purpose for me. There's a higher purpose for my business. Um, and there is a way that I can transform everything that I've built and remodel it in a way that really worked for me and, and what, you know, my lifestyle goals, my financial goals. Um, even though I had hit a seven figure, so I hit seven figures, I believe in 2020, um, went beyond seven figures in 2020, 2021, but my business was so heavy. My overhead was $50,000 a month. Um, I found that as I grew and scaled, my profit margins were like, you know, the same and sort of what, how I was advised from other coaches and mentors, it, it made me feel like I was running in place. So I kept taking on more business. And so I had this illusion of success, but I was sort of in the same place financially with, with numbers on the back end and things like that. And while I had learned so much about being an entrepreneur, I just couldn't figure out how to pretzel this business into, um, something, something different. And so that's when I started working with Makosi. I love that. And I want to pull out kind of a common thread that I see so many amazing members who join our community are struggling with, and it's that they're successful, right? Like you said, I was extremely successful, like status quo on the outside looking in, everyone would say they want what you have. Mm -hmm. And you found that you had this level of success, but were still unfulfilled and that mm -hmm. you felt like this pull that there was still like something more for you. So mm -hmm. I love that you touched on that because I feel so many people who are watching this are probably in the mm -hmm. same space where they're like, why would I walk away from this? You know? So I love that through this interview, we can really uncover what's on the other side of that. Mm -hmm. So what would you say are some of the tangible changes beyond success that you've seen since stepping into the vortex with Makosi and the Royal Shaman community? So some of the tangible changes I've seen stepping into this community and working with Makosi and, and the Royal Shaman team members has been really, it's been my ability to understand and receive clarity around what is in alignment for me. Mm. I think we're conditioned, especially as women to chase certain like external metrics of success. We think that certain milestones of success are going to usher in the beautiful aspects of life that we're all craving. You know, we think if, if I can just hit seven figures, I'll be free. Like at that point, I'll be financially free because it seems like an exorbitant amount of money. Um, you get there and you realize, oof, you know, I wasn't in alignment when I was building this because I also just didn't know, you know, I went from being someone who had lost her job to a freelancer chasing, you know, paycheck to paycheck and, and chasing odd jobs and um, to like actually starting a business with really no business acumen and learning on the fly. And um, the tangible, you know, the tangible things that I took away from working with Makosi is that no business hitting any type of milestone is going to feel good if it's not in alignment with my higher self what I actually, the vision I have for my life, the legacy I want to leave. And for me, I had a booked out roster of celebrity clients. I had dream clients, clients that people would dream to work with. And <clears throat> I received those clients really only from word of mouth. I 
I created a seven figure business with no social media marketing and no marketing of my services, um, being almost a completely invisible entrepreneur. Cause I also struggle with visibility. Um, and I, you know, work behind the scenes with some of the most famous people in the world. Um, but you know, I, it, I entered into very abusive containers, containers with clients that even though they're incredible and they are, you know, external advocates for mental health and self-care and things like that, they were extremely hard and somewhat abusive on my team and I, and, um, working with these people that I admired did not feel good from a day-to-day basis. Um, there's an expectation for me and my team to work 24 seven. We get texted at five in the morning, midnight, different time zones. I mean, it's, it's actually, there, there is an incredible lack of boundaries. And if you set boundaries with certain clients, whether it's the scope has increased, um, you know, so like, therefore we need to be paid more. We would get fired. Um, you know, really abusive parameters, especially from women entertainment that really advocate for women. And I felt horrible about it because it looked really incredible and shiny and sparkly on the outside, but the, the, the reality of the day-to-day was just not positive. And so, um, however, you know, I had achieved working with these people and figuring out how to do this with again, zero marketing strategy. And, um, you know, Makosi and I really made a plan for, cause I, I had a block that I could only deliver done for you services. Like that was my biggest block was that people don't want strategy. They don't want, you know, coaching in this space. They want like people that can execute and they want doers. And so I couldn't even see when I entered into the container with Makosi last year, I couldn't even understand or fathom that. I could completely transform my business from like a strategic, you know, standpoint, completely offload execution and really work on, you know, the piece that I love, which is strategy and identity and working on, you know, storytelling and narratives for, um, empowered female entrepreneurs, coaches, conscious entrepreneurs, and, um, conscious people in entertainment. And so, um, there was a deconditioning process. Um, and it, it's funny because as I entered the container, there was just also this, um, and I, I don't really know how to explain it, but in the past, you know, I always had, if one client dropped out, I always had more, but it was like more of the same. And there was a level where as soon as I entered the container and I started doing this work, anything that wasn't in alignment just started to fall away. So it was like team members that weren't in alignment started to fall away. Clients that weren't in alignment just started to fall fall away. And it was just all a part of this alignment process and the deconditioning process that I went through. And I think Makosi has such an incredible capacity to share a vision that's so vast, but make it so tangible and break it down in such a way that you can completely understand and also kind of like hit your cart onto that wagon and take the steps forward. She has a way of explaining extremely complex things, you know, um, and putting them in layman's terms where you're like, okay, I can actually see that. And I think having her be a mirror for me in my business. And I think too, I just want to say, because what's so unique and special about working with Makosi is that she works with so many different styles of entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. In my previous containers, I always felt like the odd duck because everyone else was a coach and I wasn't, I was an agency owner. I had a social media business and I owned agency. And I found that a lot of very high level mentors are really mentors for coaches. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to, you know, take the trajectory and be like them, those containers are really powerful and great, you know, but I find that some of those mentors manufacture m- most of the same. They're almost creating, you know, I don't want to say the word clones, but they're, they're almost creating, you know, identical versions of who they are. And then there becomes this monotonous um, category in the industry versus everyone really tapping into their individuality. 
And Makosi inside of Synarchy, which is the container I'm in, every single woman in the container is so different. We have, you know, um, a fashion brand owner. We have someone who's like at the forefront of education. We have, you know, someone, everyone is so different and not everyone is a coach. And so she has this really unique ability to like completely tap into who you are, tap into your business and also the vision that you hold for your life. And she can actually mentor and guide you to get there. Whereas again, in my other containers, and I think this is why I didn't have, you know, success quote unquote with other mentors is because they just truly didn't understand my business. And they were like, just get more clients, you know, but it's like, my business actually was not a scalable model. So my business model didn't work. And then they were advising me to go forward with a business model that just was unscalable. And so that's something that I think is so unique about Makosi is that she really has this incredible ability to tap in no matter where you are on your journey and um, help you really blueprint a, a path and tap into your vision really like nobody else. Mm, I love that. And I want to keep um, unfolding your business since you started with the Royal Shaman community. So you've kind of shared with us what it looked like how you were feeling the day to day. So can you share more about what does it look like today and what do you feel like is now possible? Yeah. So when I entered the container last year, December, 2021, I had a very standard agency model. It was done for you services. We had at the time, I think almost 15 to 20 clients that we were working with at a very high level, but we were offering so many services. It was like social media management, editorial strategy, um, you know, brand strategy. And we were, you know, managing our clients' digital identities, um, but also like their product launches, their book launches, their clothing line launches. I mean, each one of our clients you know, typically have their own brand or multiple brands under that umbrella. And, um, you know, every time they would add to our plate or they would like launch a new brand, it was like another brand or more work on our plate. And again, we were just <clears throat> with our clients, we were completely not encouraged to ask for more. In fact, if we did ask for more because the scope, you know, doubled or tripled, we were fired. So I was constantly in this conundrum of like, Oh, do I keep this client or do I, you know, cr create boundaries for myself and my team? Um, it was not latter. And so I entered this container with Makosi. I was so burnt out. I was so fried. We launched, I think for around 15 to 20 brands over the pandemic. It was just, it was, it was a lot. And I was really on the edge of burnout. And so was my team. And, um, I started working with Makosi on, really getting into the logistics of, of the business, but also what I wanted for my life, like really what we got into the vision that I held for my life and like really what would be the most successful path for me. And, um, when I entered the container as a social media, like digital strategist, um, now I've gone from revamping all of my packages um, we only have, so I went from like having almost 20 clients to having about four or five clients, like four clients now on my roster that are done for you again, according to our boundaries and, um, the way in which, you know, my team enjoys to work and the way I enjoy to work. And then all of our other client services now are consulting, really working with female entrepreneurs who want to launch a brand, have a thriving brand whether it's, you know, product brand or, you know, personal brand and all of the ways to get there. And I sit alongside of them as a digital brand strategist and everything else is outsourced. So if someone needs a social media manager or like a team member, they get them in place. And that is now a requirement to work with me is that someone has to actually have a team that I can advise and work with. And so all of that execution has come off of my plate so that I can stay in, you know, a very high level strategy seat. And through that as well, um, you know, we launched, I think 50 to 20 brands over the pandemic and Target, Sephora, you know, Walmart, massive retailers. And so now um, 
Makosi had this, this idea for me that came through a few months ago. And I was like, you know, at the time she was like, I see you going in partnership with these people and taking equity in these brands that you build. So that way, because, you know, I had been building so many brands and she was like, I see you becoming an equity partner in these brands and really helping these founders, you know, go from A to Z and, and do all the things that you do, which is really in my zone of genius. And at the time I was like, I would love to be an equity partner, but you know, how does that work from me getting paid my retainers? Because I, I had a block where people pay me a retainer. So that way I can pay for my team and live, you know, um, I'm the breadwinner of my household. I, you know, don't have a trust fund. So it's, you know, I got to pay the bills. And, um, and we came up with a strategy of really being an advisor of those brands, being paid a retainer, but also having equity, um, to build the brands in, in the, in, in the way that I do and sort of through my method. And that is now my reality. Like I am now equity partner in certain brands that I'm building with celebrity founders And, um, another sort of vision came through for me where I wanted to create this content to commerce model, um, which is, you know, developing TV shows around some of the brands that we're building and using that as, you know, a great way of storytelling. And, and it's funny because I came up with this whole vision and it it made total sense to me. And I was actually working with my therapist and I shared this idea with my therapist and my therapist is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This idea is way too big. Like this vision, like you sound a little delusional. Um, like just put your feet on the ground. Like you need to still be working with the social media clients and like blah, 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 blah. And I was so deflated because I was like, am I, you know, delusional with my therapist? My my vision was so big. And I spoke to Makosi after having this session, and I was like, you know. I don't know, is this too large? Am I chasing this thing that will potentially not happen? And, and it's funny because, you know, I, I had, after this vision came through, I reached out to a friend who owns a massive production company that does, you know, chef's table on Netflix and all of these great projects. And then, um, you know, I had a meeting with them scheduled. I had, you know, some partners lined up that wanted to be part of the show and the building the IP. And I sort of had all the pieces already solidified. And so Makosi was like, you have all these pieces right there. Like you're no, um, how can this be intangible? It's actually tangible. And so I went from basically being a social media manager, just so burnt out and fried and working 24 seven for celebrity clients to really just like completely transforming my business strategic, becoming an equity partner in brands, this entire other vision came through. And um, now I'm developing a TV show at Netflix. (laughs) So, I mean, such a 180 and it really happened in a matter of months. Um, Whereas like when I entered the container in December, I just could not see the forest for the trees. Like I, I just was like, I am in this gilded cage and I just really couldn't see my way out when it was, um, there's this great story in um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, which is, um, it's in one of the chapters, I can't remember which chapter, but it's called Three Feet from Gold. And it talks about this gold miner who, you know, bought all these tools and like went out digging for gold and was like, you know, mining and mining and mining and digging and digging and digging. And he didn't succeed. He tried and he said, listen, I'm been digging for gold and I'm, I failed and you know, this isn't going to happen for me. So he went to sell his tools to somebody who looked on a map and had a blueprint of where the gold might be and sort of like shifted his strategy and actually struck gold three feet away from where the other man was digging. And that's how that's, that's, it's so, it's such a great metaphor because that's how I felt like I was so focused on digging over here that I couldn't see that this incredibly aligned vision was literally three feet away. Mm. And, um, that's what Makosi really helped me see. So it was easier than I thought, um, because it doesn't have to be hard, but I could not see it on my own. So having someone who can mirror that back to me was, was really incredible. And then also just have the support to get there. I mean, it's, you know, I think when you, when you do take a quantum leap and you do jump in your business, knowing that, you are held and supported is 
almost everything, you know? So, um, so I'm really grateful to have this experience. And I was on your very first call in Synarchy. So I can, <laughs> I can vividly remember that first conversation yeah. and now having this conversation with you today, just the unfolding of your business, your embodiment of self, like it's truly been an incredible yeah. incredible transfer witness. It's amazing. So oh. what would you say is the biggest difference between who you're being like who Heather was when she first joined a year ago versus who you're operating as today? So the biggest difference in my being and my sense of self and my identity is I had entered this container really thinking about myself as, you know, a brand strategist and almost, you know, like a digital architect basically for, for talent. And now I see myself as an expanded entrepreneur. You know, I have, have refined my model to build this ship that, you know, can, can, um, drive forward what is exciting to me and what is incredibly expansive. You know, I was, um, I think when I entered the the container, I was really in a state of survival. I was like, I just, you know, need to get through this, these days and weeks. And my life felt so lackluster because I actually didn't have a life. You know, I, I couldn't go to a dinner without my phone literally just being disrupted between, whether it's clients complaining about team members, texting my team members till midnight, my team members feeling so burnt out and like being so exhausted. And I couldn't even, you know, and, and that was like times 20, like that's not even one person being like that. It's like 20 clients being like that. And it was horrible to be honest. I mean, it was, um, it, the reality of it was just, you know, it was really baked in struggle. And so, I was just at a point of survival at that time. And I was like, if I could just get by, if I can just, you know, and I almost kept throwing money at the problem where it's like, if I can just, you know, earn this, um, this much, I can hire more team and I can be away from it. But then I realized I'm like, I'm putting all these people in between me and my business. That's not the right business, you know? And there were aspects of my business that I really, really loved. Like I love brand building. I love strategy. I love working with someone that has a vision and bringing that vision to life. I love reacting to people and, and I love building with people. My, you know, I'm a four, six projector. So my entire, you know, human design is about vision and relationships. And that's, that's what I do. And that's what I love, you know? So it's like, I was really, I had entered the container really like I'm a brand strategist. My genius is available for hire and, um, and the other piece is, is that, you know, being a working, I think behind celebrities, there are examples of my work that the whole world is consuming on a daily basis that doesn't have my name on it. And nobody could even see like all of the hours of the day that I had spent always had somebody else's name on it. And, um, I wasn't allowed to talk about the clients that I worked with. I wasn't allowed to like share work. Um, because, you know, celebrities obviously don't want to feel like they're not doing it. And, um, it, I was just in survival. And so I just saw myself as this, um, this person that like all of my creativity is really yours to slap your name on. And then you thrive. And, um, and now that's not the case, you know, now it's like done with you versus done for you. And, um, I just see myself as an entrepreneur and someone who helps people expand and also, you know, completely move forward with their vision. And, um, it's just a completely different way of looking, you know, at my life at this point. Mm, I love that so much. So if someone is watching this right now and they're considering working with the Royal Shaman and stepping into our community, what would you share with them? And what's the most euphoric part? There are so many euphoric parts of working with Makosi and the Royal Shaman community. I would say, I mean, th there's so many things. Number one is the quality of people in this container is just so good. 
Um, I think that Makosi and the team do such an incredible job at vetting. And so you enter into this container, you, you, you have this sisterhood that's available and it's so supportive, you know, and that's the other thing it's, you know, I think Makosi um, or working with Makosi is like the selling point, quote unquote, but just the other women, you know, the other coaches and integrators um, like you, Caitlin, and then the other women in the, the group, everyone coaches each other. So you, you actually have multiple perspectives. You know, you obviously have Makosi's perspective and then the integrative coaches perspectives, but then you also have real life experience from other entrepreneurs in, in various um, pockets of the business and the industry. And I think that's, what's so beautiful because, you know, it, instead of getting one person support, you're getting 10, 15 people's, you know, support. And it really, really, really helps in such, you know, a massive way. And, you know, I think all of the women in the group too, we're working together. We sidebar, we strategize, we, you know, um, it's amazing because this journey to entrepreneurship can be very lonely. I don't, I don't have many friends who are entrepreneurs in LA where I live and some are, but I think, um, you know, it can be a really lonely journey and having that support is truly crucial. And having someone who's just holding space for you and in your corner is crucial to success because, you know, as an entrepreneur, you will have good days and bad days. It's, it's, you know, an exhilarating roller coaster. And so, um, that support is really crucial and vital. I think the other thing that is so incredible about the, the mentorship is entering this container, you will be told something completely different than everyone else has told you, right? Because all of this advice over there doesn't work. I will tell, I've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in coaching in resources. I've read all the books. I've done all the things I've like done all the manifestation courses, all of those things. And, um, and while it does make a difference and it does, you know, it's a great catalyst on your journey. There is a very different way that Makosi approaches mentorship, coaching, and personal development. And for me, it's the way. Um, it was an alternative way of thinking that deconditioned my mind exactly where I needed it to be because I could not, I had so many blind spots and, and her method really helps you dig into those blind spots. And then you're like, Oh, okay. And it, and it's, and it's simple in terms of you know, everyone else is telling you to go left. She tells you to go right. And then it's like, oh, okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and again, it's, it's really like undoing all of the beliefs that you hold about yourself in your life. But when you just surrender and lean into it with all of the support that, you know, is placed around you, it's, it's absolutely game changing. Um, and again, it's, it's really the only thing as someone who has done all the things and invested in all the people. And like, you know, it, it is the only thing that has actually helped me thrive and catapult into exponential growth. I love that. And I just want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be here with us and to share your story, because it has been such an amazing journey to witness, like I said before, and you're such an amazing pillar of our community. So I just thank you so much for being here. And I can't wait to see what happens next. <laughs> Me too. I'm really excited. I have a meeting today, actually. So I'm really excited. And yeah, and I, I just, I cannot appreciate Makosi and you and everyone in the community enough. It's literally been life-changing. So, um, so I encourage anyone who wants to do this work or who's just excited to explore what is even possible. Cause that's the other thing. I think even our own goals, Makosi says this all, all the time, even our own goals can be limiting. There is, there is a world of possibility beyond even what you think is possible. And that is what is really revealed in this work. And then it's like the, there's such a clear path that crystallizes to get there. And so this is just the most fun, exhilarating, wild journey that we'll ever take in our lives. And, you know, to, to the, the, the opportunity and privilege to get our, to get to know ourselves more deeply, um, and build a life in alignment is really the most profound work. Mm. 
everything you said right there was just beautiful. I completely agree. And thank you so, so much. And I hope you have a beautiful day. Thank you too.